Hello my friends, who else here loves an underdog? I love talking about things on my channel that are kind of underrated, that I think deserve maybe a little more love and attention in the beauty community. That's gonna be the focus today. It's funny, and I think it's kind of obvious if you're pretty in tune with the makeup world, you can see what things really take off. Maybe they get recommended by a certain person, word just spreads, everybody's trying it, everybody's liking it. What I'm gonna talk about are some things that maybe I haven't even talked about enough, but then there are other things where, yeah, I've definitely talked about them here on my channel, but I feel like they haven't really like caught fire elsewhere. So if you're tuning into this video, I hope you enjoy. I hope you come up with some ideas that maybe you haven't been hearing about left and right. And this is confined to drugstore makeup, and I'm just picturing like the aisles of my Walmart store, every brand in Walmart. I'm trying to pick something from each brand that I feel like is the most underrated and yet a very worthy of being viral thing. And yeah, there were definitely some different things that popped into my mind where I was like, ooh, I, yeah, I love that, but I think it's gotten pretty popular, so I don't think it's that underrated anymore, but there are some things I think really are. Starting off with primer and hard candy, the Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer, and yes, I'm going to be applying all of these as we go. This has the 12-hour makeup grip. This is the thing where, like, I keep wanting to shout this one from the rooftops because even though the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer primer is good and I think it does work. This goes on so much more smoothly and it does the same work, does the same job. It's still a gripping primer, but it doesn't feel nearly as sticky on the skin and it just glides on with ease and I've used this so much. I think this might be my second tube of it. I mean, it is a legitimately great Primer. It adds a little hydration to the skin. It might even add a little more hydration than the e.l.f. does, but I do also feel it plays a role in the extended wear of makeup. So I would definitely look into this one if you're needing a new primer. I don't know why I feel like this one hasn't been able to really knock out the e.l.f. I guess price-wise they're not that far off, but this one is even cheaper. Foundation today is going to be one from Maybelline, and I feel like especially with the surge of popularity of stick and cream products in other areas, areas of the face, you know, like blushes, bronzers, etc. Um, the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation Stick. I kind of recently rediscovered this in my collection. I wear classic ivory. I do find this in Walmart. It says shine free plus balance, and it truly is a good foundation stick. It has a little core there that I think is part of the shine free thing, but it never seems over drying. It's a nice medium coverage. It goes on so smooth, and um, it's just fast and easy to blend it out. You can see how I just just swiped it on and then I'm using this little e.l.f. duo brush and just gently going over those areas where I put on the stick and I've got nice even kind of natural matte finish. It's a really great product and I feel like there really aren't that many foundation sticks currently in the drugstore and this one's been around for a long time. But yeah, it deserves more hype. And if you're like a beginner makeup person, I think this would be awesome because you're not really fussing with pumps of product and patching it around and then blending it in. You're literally just drawing it on the skin and it is kind of buildable. I'm building a little bit here around the nose. You're just drawing it on and blending right over top of that. And I can use kind of a circular motion in some areas here on the nose. I'm trying to maintain a little more coverage, so I'm dabbing a bit. But it's easy, and it wears well. And yeah, when I think of Maybelline, this is one of the underrated products I can think of. I did pick one more as well. But like I said, just trying to look at every brand and thinking, what's the one thing that's standing out to me? That's not already a super loved and I think somewhat hyped up product that maybe I've already recommended. Concealer-wise, here's one I have absolutely loved that I feel like just has never been able to gain the traction that Camo Concealer has, but it's amazing. It works so well, and it's Wet n Wild Incognito. I feel like, have lots of people figured out that the Photo Focus foundations are good? Yes, but the Incognito Concealer has still been hanging out here like, hey, try me. I wear the shade Light Beige. This is really good coverage. The one thing I would say is I can get away with using, and I should use just a little bit more of it than I would Elf Camo Concealer. Yes, I love Camo Concealer. I can get away with fewer dots and get a little more potent coverage, but this is probably gonna cost you just a little bit less. I just apply like, not drastically more, but just a little bit more to the skin and I can pretty much end up with the same result and same staying power as Camo Concealer. So pull in a brush, pull in a sponge. Today I'm just using a brush and I move that product around a little bit with the smaller side. 
You can see the shade is just perfect, and then you can bop over it with the larger side so as to not over blend and take away too much coverage, but end result is really good coverage here with this. It wears well. If you keep up with my videos regularly, you have seen this combine and work so well on top of various foundations. But I don't know, you know, for all I know, maybe this concealer has a whole little like a uh, Facebook fan club. But to me, given the content I watch, I never see this one brought up by anyone. <laughs> for powder, um, this recommendation is going to come from Revlon, and it's the Revlon Color Stay Pressed Powder. Actually, a really good pressed powder option. It can definitely extend the wear of your makeup. I have this in light to medium. It has a really nice creaminess to it, and I think it looks natural on the skin. This shade can kind of function to set my whole face only set my under eye, whatever I'm really looking for. Um, if you wanted this to function like more of a powder foundation, it kind of could. You know, it adds a little coverage to your look. You know, it does have that softness that reminds me of like the L'Oreal Infallible a little bit or a L'Oreal True Match. I love those, but I feel like they've gotten a lot more attention. And so here I've taken this, I've set my under eye and I don't look too dull or anything. And I'm also just using it to set my T-zone. Revlon Color Stay Pressed Powder. This is also a powder I feel like I can have in my purse too because it can touch up anywhere. It's not like it's too dark for the under eye, like I said, or too light for the rest of my face. It's just a good middle ground, that light to medium shade, and it comes with a puff and a mirror. Next recommendation comes to us from Rimmel, and it's the Natural Bronzer. There are a lot of times where I see a higher priced bronzer recommended, like the L'Oreal Infallible. Everyone loves that stuff, and I'm thinking, this is two dollars and change. It's the Natural Bronzer. Um, Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder, by the way, I feel like that's kind of gained a little bit more of a foothold. I hear more people talking about that, but the Natural Bronzer is like the cheapest bronzer in the drugstore and really good. I love the shade called Sun Bronze. And you'll see here, powder bronzer, you know, if you're wanting a powder bronzer, I know a lot of people like to use sticks and creams, and that's kind of a trend. But this goes on easy. Really, I feel like everything I've applied so far, an underlying theme has been ease. User-friendly products you could recommend to a beginner and I think they could make them work. Soft little contour. This isn't like extreme but it's certainly like perking up the skin tone and it's very buildable. As you can see, I just built it right there. And uh, what's the finish on this? It's overall, it's a matte bronzer. And there we go, skin's got some color. It was easy, it was quick. Packaging on this has always been kind of like meh. You're just taking that cap and pressing it down. And if you get a little crack in your cap, it won't go on as well. But as far as the meat and potatoes of this product, it's great. When we're talking about blush, I'm gonna shout out the thing that I don't hear anyone else recommending, and I feel like I could not shout this one louder from the rooftops, CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones. Yes, this is where it's at for blush. These blushes deserve so much more hype. Um, they come with three colors. There's always a highlighter in there, and the highlight is beautiful, and they were putting that highlighter in before highlighter was cool and a part of every brand, you know? So I've got the shade Refined Rose here. I love Sophisticated Sable. There's a plum one. There's a peach one. Just, like, check it out. It, this one's the more pinky toned option, I guess, this refined rose. And the blushes are great. They're like the formula of the Cheekers blushes, which are awesome, but you're just getting a little something extra here. And everybody can work with these two shades and adjust and, you know, make the blush turn out a little bit deeper or whatever you need. So I'm starting out with that. Hi, baby. I'm starting out with that first initial shade, but then we say, okay, let's do a little more punch, a little more pigment. And sometimes I'll go slightly lower on the cheek with that extra shade or a little further back, but easily I've built up the color just a little bit. I'll never understand why these don't get more buzz. And maybe the packaging isn't like super updated and they put the little brush in there that you're not gonna use. So what? It's a great product. I feel like I'm gonna come off kind of annoyed in this video because I just don't get why certain things don't get buzzed about on social media as much. Maybe they're fully popular among the makeup buying public, but just the circles I'm in talking about makeup that's not being talked about. Go over to the highlight. Okay, these are gorgeous. Watch, let's be in focus a beautiful, brightened up cheek. It's a two-in-one product, gang. Like, get it. Look at that. That is so sneaky. You can't see any trail of highlighter glitter or anything. 
they made a fully advanced, very luxury level highlighter in these little trios that's just pearlescent and lovely. It needs buzz. It needs attention. Furthermore, when we're talking about highlighter, another thing that I feel like I mention all the time, who's getting this? Are you not finding it? Like I don't see anyone else talking about the Lumi Glow Nude palette in Moonkissed. These are amazing shades and I like them for so many of the same reasons I just mentioned liking that highlighter. No flaky trail. They do not swatch well. Now they're firm and you'll see maybe a little trace on your finger and be like, I'm not expecting much, you know? But you put them on your cheeks and they're just stunning. All the shades can be worked with. This one I'll sometimes even pop on like as a little eyeshadow or something or a light dusting all over but this color right here has been a big go-to for highlight I know I don't need any more but can you see how it is just bouncing off this would be so good for fair skin because these shades truly just like catch light they don't bring any added depth they are only brightness that i believe is the most underrated thing from l'oreal um and yeah i'm thinking maybe it's just because it's harder to find i pretty much only see it in walmart another thing i'll go ahead and mention now that we've kind of concluded the face steps is my pick from milani and it's their like combo palettes i think these are really good they are a fabulous drugstore answer to charlotte tilbury instant look in a palette they put out the first one they're called the inclusive eye cheek and face palette and they look like this they've got eyeshadows blush bronzer and highlight and the first time they released this um, they put out a light to medium and a medium to deep and I thought that was really good um, and then they put out a smoky one that I think was only in one version but I really feel like we need to be praising this stuff so they continue to make more because I'm picturing this being awesome in different color schemes cooler color schemes give me a plum give me a burgundy you know everything they're doing in terms of you know, coming out with different eyeshadow color stories. I want them to work it into the face stuff as well. The pigmentation is gorgeous. Is this my ideal shade of bronzer? No, but can I still cut it some slack and see that everything in here is really working? It's such a good all-in-one easy concept for people, and I think much of Milani's line gets a lot of hype, but I think these are more impressive than a lot of people give them credit for. Again, it might be something you see in Walmart, but don't see in every other retailer that carries Milani, but worth it, good quality. Keep putting these out, Milani. We still want the two different shade range options and we want more colors. My voice has gone hoarse from making demands. When I was formulating my list, which by the way, I did this while my girls were in dance, their lovely dance class, I sat and I just went brand by brand and I thought of the things. I had a co- winner with the Fit Me for Maybelline. It was the Brow Fast Sculpt, which is one of the best brow gels you can possibly get. It's tinted and it has that special brush where some of the bristles are short, some of the bristles are long, short bristles apply, longer bristles rake through. It's a brilliant product. So I'm going to use that in my brows today. I wear it in the, uh, is it medium brown? Yeah, medium brown. Sometimes I start trying to read the other language that's printed on the labels. This one's running a little bit low, but I can still totally see how, okay, the short bristle side is applying product. The longer bristles can kind of pull it up and apply less but direct the brows where you want them. And then burying the lead on this one, the hold is incredible great all day hold with it. So highly, highly, highly recommend and don't hear a lot of people going for this. And it's one of those products that you kind of have to get to know how special it is. You may not just see it in the packaging and assume that this brilliant brush is involved. There was a kitten on my lap there, but she had an F. You ever have a song going through your head and it like works its way into your dreams? That'll happen to me. Like last song I hear on the radio getting home from somewhere sticks with me and I'm like feel like I'm hearing it all night or I randomly wake up in the night and I'm thinking about that song like what's up with that so this feels like a pretty minor brow to me because I'm usually filling in with pencils and whatnot like it, it feels like so much less work but it's still getting filled in well and I'm getting that hold and that fluff big fan of that now I am going to use some eyeshadow primer, but this I do not any longer feel it is underrated. For a while maybe I did, but I think this is getting the love it deserves, the Milani eyeshadow primer. I get comments in 
every couple days where I see somebody saying, I tried that and it made all the difference. I do feel like people are catching on that this is the elite eyeshadow primer that they need. Just a small amount between two fingers. Yes, kitten. You were just up here. You didn't want to be here. Been making my own tacos. They're so good, just so easy, and you have everything available. Like, you make up the taco meat, put it in the fridge. I do like a black bean and corn mixture, put that in the fridge. Then you got some pico de gallo. That gives you that tomato and that fresh flavor. Some cheese, you pop them in the microwave real quick just to get them a little melty before you put the tomatoes and stuff on. So good, so good. I've just really got a taste for that right now. For eyeshadow, this is gonna be Elf's underrated thing. This is really good, and this has been off of my radar for a while. Like, I haven't thought about this in some time, but as I really went through everything I could think about from this line, besides the tweezers, the two or three dollar tweezers that are the best I own, the Mad for Matte palette, this can still be obtained in some retailers where e.l.f. is sold and also on e.l.f.'s own website. This beautiful palette of basics, so good. Do you remember when these were new? This was a fan favorite but it's dwindled, you know? And I think in the place where people are at right now with eyeshadow, I'm seeing a lot more like natural looks, barely there looks, a very low fuss vibe to things. I feel like this fits that so well. So that's what we're gonna use today. It's a very well-balanced palette. We have dark, we have medium, we have light. Um, I'm gonna go into this little uh, tan brown color. And yeah, I've had my palette for a good long while. And they put out a version two that is not still available anymore and it had like some kind of sunsetty colors it was so pretty but this one just talking basics i mean look at that pigment they're soft they're phenomenal quality and yeah i felt like as i look through elf's website i'm thinking gosh a lot of this stuff does get a ton of hype when elf puts out new stuff i feel people really take note and i think there have been some long-standing things like i couldn't say anything from holy hydration is underrated i couldn't say any of this putty stuff is underrated you know like they get buzz but this ain't nobody talking about this anymore for a time they did but it has swooped under the radar and it needs more attention i'm gonna go with this dusty kind of mauvey shade maybe just blend toward the edge with that it's gonna be a really easy look, naturally shadowed. I'm gonna take some of this cool deep brown with my flatter side of my Persona brush, so this is the apply side. And then you can flip that brush, kind of wedging it in there, pulling it up. Look at that. I mean, this is easy, guys. These shades blend seamlessly into one another. You'll end up with the most classic look or a really smoky look, frankly, if that's what you want. What do we want to go inward with? Uh, let's use some of this brightening kind of pinky shade there. There's a little pink tone in it, you can see. Pop that lid. We have a cheerleading competition this weekend and it's not gonna be one where you get ready at the place like last time. We're gonna be arriving ready. So that means I've done the math and I think the girls are gonna need to get up at 4.30. Yep. I'm gonna probably get up at like 3.45 there is some comfort in having your home court advantage getting ready, you know, like not having to take all the stuff and get ready wherever it may be, but it's just early. That's all we'll have to battle with. Good news is I can just let Bubba sleep until about like 15 minutes before we're ready to go, so that'll be fine. I'm taking some of this dusty, it's a dusty rose. Let's just call it like it is, it's dusty rose. I'm just adding that to the crease situation because Sometimes we don't know when to stop, and we just like seeing the fun matte shades. I mean, I to me, these are fun. <laughs> I like seeing the matte shades layer and blend. Pretty hazy. Um, let's see, I've gotten pretty close to the brow here. Clean off my brush a little bit, and maybe just take a bit more of that light shade. That kind of light, pinky-toned, extra brightening. We may come back to that palette as we do lower lash line and stuff. Actually, let's just do it now. I do want a little haze down there. I'm gonna go to this kind of plummy looking one with my Profusion Small Pointed, and we'll just use that as some, some smudgy lower liner. Now in terms of eyeliner, this pick comes from Alme, and this is the All Day Intense Gel Eyeliner, and I have it in rich black. 
this is so good you will be shocked at how easily this goes on this might be the closest thing in my collection to a persona 24 hour eyeliner pencil like not pressing hard getting an easy rich black line this would probably i haven't tried it yet but it would probably be great in the lower water line too but like I'm not applying hardly any pressure. I'm going to gently smudge over my line just gently with my finger. It's easy, 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 easy. And I assume there's other shades available, but if you need a good black, I can vouch for the fact that this is an amazing black. Very dark, very long wearing. Another hidden gem of Almay. Almay as a whole is kind of like a hidden gem. Not the entire brand. I'm not saying everything in it is a home run, but I mean, when you hear somebody recommend something from Almay, you probably stop and think, ooh, nobody really talks about that. Uh, but they have good blushes too. Back in the day, they had some incredible mascaras. I'm thinking back when I was in college that long ago. Um, but I'm gonna do some waterline so I can see how this does today just for my own knowledge, but I'm going into that waterline and then we're not gonna just leave it there. We're going to smudge within the lash line too, on the skin, some of this liner, okay? And then see how I'm just using my pinky finger to soften that out a little bit. We may add a little more shadow as well, but never just leave it on the inner rim. You want something, some of that same level of darkness coming down in between those lashes. Back with the dark shade here. And we haven't even touched, you know, like the black in this palette, that cool gray. There are options. Look at that little smoky lower lash line. I always think I'd rather be underrated than overrated. Great, great. Now, uh, my next thing. Oh shoot, I forgot to do my thing from NYX. The Epic Smoke. Epic Smoke Lower Liner. This is a great lower liner. The Nude Haze color. It's not as dark and smoky as this, but basically you have a little brush on the one end, which I don't really need to use because this liner is teardrop shaped and thick enough to basically just go along your lower lash line and be the perfect kind of smudgy shade that works for anything. And it stays in place, it wears well, but you just run it along the lash line and it, it it's just thick enough to where it doesn't need smudging. And it's probably softer than the pressure I actually applied there. But it gives that beautiful soft definition. I love that product. I don't hear anybody else talk about these, but this nude haze color is just great on the lower lash line. I use that quite often. I'm not sure that this gets to count as underrated because the brand is so new. New, but currently, I guess I can still call it an underdog before word really gets out on this. The Relove brand by Revolution has this long lash lengthening mascara. It's under $3. It's a tubing mascara. It actually builds great length and it doesn't smudge at all. Upper and lower lashes for me. There are not a lot of products I feel that way about. So yeah, highly recommend and I'm going to be applying that today. Um, also something that didn't get talked about, Neutrogena's underrated product. And I feel like it's pretty underrated because like this is a popular thing in the makeup world, but theirs needs more love. It's their hydrating multi-use stick. It comes in the one shade called Temptation and it's kind of like rosy, toasty, and I've used it in other videos, so I'll just have to find that link and put it below. But it's gorgeous on the lips and the cheeks, an easy texture to blend out and work with. I would love to see more colors in that product um, because I just think those creams are so, so hot these days. And I think if they did come out with a few more shades, that might increase their chances of being seen and known for that product. But back to my mascara here. Does it take a little bit more time to build compared to like Lash Paradise? Probably a little bit more, but it can do some major length. It really can. And it doesn't stick my lashes together. It's not too like mega wet and creamy. And then by tubing, in case you haven't heard me address this before, um, it's gonna come off like little rubbery bits when you remove your makeup. It's gonna like ball up and just release from the lashes in bits as opposed to melting down and smearing. It's incapable of turning to a smeary place. And that's why, you know, we like mascaras of that type on our lower lashes because they can't go anywhere until you start washing your face.
And um, I said this in my revolution video, but you wanna just keep building on the eye that you're on. It dries pretty quick, so going back and forth, like you won't have as much building capability if you do that. So just stick with it while it's got some moisture still available and it can keep going and going. Look at that, that's really good for my eyes. And just the price point, you know? You find a good mascara at under $3. What else can compete? I mean, Milani put out their liquid extensions, whatever, to be like Thrive, it's the same color as Thrive. And you know that that's like two to three times the cost of this. Uh, definitely three times. Now this is starting to build up pretty quickly actually over here on this left eye. I am making a little bit of a mess though, which is not really the brush's fault because the brush is not huge. It's a classic spiraled around brush. All other drugstore mascaras should be scared. Oh, and by the way, I meant to mention as I was doing my eye makeup, the Profusion brushes. I think that's probably the most underrated thing from their line. I think a lot of their palettes have gained attention. You know, they've gotten some love, but the brushes, I think the toughest thing there is just the fact that they don't sell the brushes individually in store. You have a little bundle of three of the eye brushes and it's not all three of the ones that I love most but if you do get on their website you can find them there um, they're really really good quality eye brushes I'm just trying to see if I can take care of some of these smudges does a tubing mascara flake away in the same way a traditional one does I think it does not that might be the con there of the tubing mascara a dampened Q-tip can get it, but now I'll have to go in and repair the eyeshadow, do the lower lash, I'll be right back. I think we got it pretty well cleaned up. We also have some lower lash mascara on there, which always softens up that kind of smoky lower lash line. Now for lips, if you're thinking, what brand haven't we heard about yet? It's Physician's Formula. These diamond lip plumpers, it's called Diamond Plumper Mineral Wear Lip Plumper, and I have the shade Brilliant Berry Diamond, but they have some other shades. These go on beautifully, and these, I think, are a really nice drugstore response to a Buxom-type product if you're not a huge fan of the Milani for whatever reason. Like, these are beautiful in this shade in particular. Let me put it on. Plus, they smell like vanilla, and they do have some tingle that's not painful. The shine is beautiful. I think they feel a little bit thinner than Milani Keep It Full, but not greasy at all little tingle happening and it's one of those things where is it doing a lot of literal plumping to the lips? I'm not sure but it's definitely smoothing everything out and giving me nice even actual full colored shine that I love. Physicians Formula will always generate hype for their face products. I feel complexion just really takes center stage with that brand but they're doing a good lip product here plus the packaging is cool. Looks kind of like a diamond. So friends I think that's everything of the underrated drugstore products that should be viral that deserve more love. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments section if you are actively a fan of any of these things or if you're planning to pick them up or if you've got some complete other ideas for me. Again, this video just kind of focused on those brands available at Walmart just because, you know, it helps me to have some kind of parameter. One thing from every brand I have access to there. But yeah, thank you guys so much for your time. I love you and I will see you again very soon. Bye!